Happy New Year, guys. Ah, green tea. Good stuff. Good for you. Oh, Happy New Year. God. Man, it's great that you stopped into my base camp. Been busy boy. I've been a busy boy. Miss Daisy's had me busy doing all kind of projects and stuff. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, check out my hat, guys. Check out my hat. There's a cannon there, right? Cannon. Come and take it. And then we got the Nuge autograph, right? Does it... Guys, does that look like a penis to you up here? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, I went into the uh, restaurant. Miss Stacy and I, we had breakfast. We have breakfast all the, all the time down here at the local diner. And my buddy in there, he's my uh, mechanic. I've known him since 99. And uh, we've been good buds and all. He's really got the hots for Miss Daisy. He's had, had hots for her way back in 99. And uh, he told me, pulled me aside one day, and he says, boy, you're Miss Daisy's hot. And I said, you like her? He said, man, I love her. Of course, he's, he's married. I think he's on a third or fourth or fifth marriage. I don't know. I can't keep up with him, guys. I just can't keep up with him. Anyway, every time he sees her, he's got to come over and give her a hug and a kiss, you know, which I don't mind, you know. So anyway, uh, I told him before, I said, you know, he said, I'd like to give her a hickey. I said, I don't, I don't really mind if you do that. Just, just put it where nobody can see it, you know. Don't, don't just have it out there exposed, you know. But anyway, uh, he, uh, I walked in there and he's over there with all of his motorcycle uh, biker buddies. And uh, so I walked over, I had this hat on. I had to show it off. It was a Christmas gift, right? Went over there and show it off. And all of his buddies are sitting around. I don't know if he could, you know, I don't know if he wears glasses. I think he wears glasses. I don't think he had them on. He looked at me and he saw, I said, you like my hat? And he goes, you pervert. Pervert? I said, pervert? I said, well, maybe I am. I don't know. And that's all he said, and his biker buddies saw my hat. They were, they looked at him like, huh? Like, so I said, have a nice breakfast. He said, I gotta come over a little bit and see Miss Daisy. I said, okay, whenever you're ready. So he comes over a little bit. He sits down next to Miss Daisy, gives her a hug and a kiss on the cheek, right? He said, I like your hat. I said, am I still a pervert or what? He said, I said, he said, no, I didn't, under, I couldn't see what that actually was. I said, you thought that was a friggin' penis up there. He said, I did, I did. I, th I said, yeah, right. Like, I want to walk around town all day long with a wiener on my cap so I can be a dickhead, right? Yeah, you know... <laughs> You know, some of my friends, I don't know, you guys, if I, you know, if I need any enemies, you know. They just don't understand either, you know. I have feelings, you know. I have feelings, too, you know. Anyway, Jesus. Anyway, I called, uh, a guy called me, one of my subscribers. Uh, he's a little, he's a little puckered up, not bad, because I did a video, as you guys. Let me shut off this AC unit. It's driving me crazy. There we go. A lot better. Yeah, I had a fella call. Nice guy. He called. He was concerned because he watched one of my videos on beekeeping and uh, beekeeper's health. And, you know, I'm always into the health nut thing. And he's been watching some of my stuff. And we talked about, you know, I, as you know, I've had prostate cancer and everything's going fine. Hunky dory. A lot of guys are asking me how I'm doing and all that. And I appreciate that, guys, you know checking up on old Steve. I'll see how I'm doing and all that. Uh, so that's good. And uh, he come to find out he's got the same urologist that I've got. But they got into a little pissing contest. Okay. And it was about, you know, should we, 
he he got up to seven. He got up to like five, four, five. After four on a PSA, they're going to want to do a biopsy, okay? And I messed around too on that deal for a little while, and I was pissing off my urologist. And well, let's try this and let's try that. I just didn't want the rod up the backside, you know, and then blowing 12 holes through my prostate, through my colon into my prostate. Uh, if you research it, that's how it goes. Um, so I was trying to avoid that. And of course, this fellow that called me, you know, he's looking at all this stuff too and going, holy crap, I got to go through all that, you know. And anyway, he got to talking with the guy. He said, finally, the doctor said, the same doctor I had, he said, look, if you don't want to do what I tell you to do, maybe you need to go find somebody else. Maybe I'm not your guy. So they kind of separated ways there, right? So he went on and he told me the story and I said, listen, I said, it's, it's, it's much work as these guys got on uh, stuff on their plate. They don't have time to play any games uh, at all. Yeah, so anyway, he said, I wanted to get your opinion on this thing because you've been through this whole deal. And he asked me a pile of questions that he was concerned about. And uh, I told him everything that happened to me. And I told him, I said, this doctor that you got and I got, I'm giving him five stars, okay? His team was great. I went through the surgery fine. Here's the problem, guys, and I want you to know this. Don't play around with this. And this thing, too, of, oh, we can put radioactive seeds in there and we can do this. In my opinion, in my non-professional beekeeper opinion, don't do any of that. No. Get the thing removed. If there's, if they detect cancer in there, they're going to do the biopsy. And if they detect cancer in there, if you mess around too long, it's going to spread. It's going to grow outside the prostate. It's going to infest and, and go inside the lymph nodes. Now, now you've got a life and death situation. If you keep it all inside the prostate, catch it early, get it removed. You remove the prostate. Remove it. Granted, you will have probably ED. You're not going to ejaculate semen anymore. Duh. Okay. Uh, you're going to, you can still have a climax with that, okay? It's not as intense as you would if you had semen coming out, but you're going to have a climax, okay? Recovery time on this deal is about six weeks, the same way as you would if you had a hernia surgery, all right? And trust me, you don't want to do any heavy lifting or anything, and in light lifting, even after six weeks with this whole scenario. Yeah, so I, I think once I got done with the conversation with the fella, uh, we have chit-chat about bees, too. He's a beekeeper, and he doesn't live far from me. And so we had, uh, he's a natural beekeeper, too. I kind of like that. Uh, he only runs four colonies. He's trying to make the better bee. And uh, sounds like he's on the right page. Uh for a backyard hobbyist making a better bee. Okay, yeah, I'm all for it. And I hope he does well with that. Uh, he's got colonies that are living through year after year, no treatments and all. So, and then he'll reproduce from survivor stock. Okay. There's a couple guys around me doing that same thing instead of using chemicals like I'm doing. All right. But anyway. I hope that everything goes well for this fella. He said he was up to seven, up to seven on PSA. I said that that is the right, right there is a, a red flag. Get in there and get that biopsy done ASAP. In, in my opinion, get it done, and go ahead and do the surgery. This guy. <laughs> He's been at it, the guy that's my guy and his guy has been doing it, he's been doing it 15 plus years. Robotic surgery with the Da Vinci machine, the robot. 
So get it done, guys. Don't play with this thing. Get it done. Get it out. Yes. He, he was six. He told me he was 60 years old. Well, I'm 72. Uh, so this is nothing to play games with. Get the thing out of there. At my age, uh, we're not making babies no more. So you don't need it. Okay, get it out. Uh, so that's that. I think he's gonna. I think he'll be fine if he gets gets in there and gets catches this thing early and get it out of there. <laughs> Speaking of doctors, had my, I did my blood work, my annual blood work for my doctor, and we had a little, little, a uh, little chit chat, and uh, he is my primary is buddies with my old urologist, my old urologist was going to leave me off from uh, testosterone for two years. Now, we talked before about testosterone. It doesn't cause cancer, but if you have cancer, it can elevate it. Well, they took me off of it way back in June. I had this surgery way back in June, as you remember. Well, they took me off testosterone, and immediately my testosterone started crashing and when that happens your whole body starts crashing once you go on testosterone you don't make it anymore okay so you have to keep injecting testosterone weekly until they stick you into the uh incinerator or the pine box whichever way you decide to go you have got to stay with that and otherwise your body will crash and you'll feel like crap and that's the way most guys go out and uh, go out of the food chain uh, your, once you, uh, your testosterone, as we age, us men age, uh, prostate issues, this and that, testosterone drops. And this is another beauty. Big Pharma does not, on regular blood work that your doctor will do, the only thing they're concerned with, uh, let's see, sugar, blood sugar. Well, that's good to know, yeah. And the other uh, one that I, I call completely uh it's a farce, in my opinion, non-professional opinion, is cholesterol, all right? Big Pharma, they train the doctors, Big Pharma trains all these physicians how to pump drugs into the human race. And one of their little beauties is cholesterol medication, which I think, to my opinion, is a total scam. They say, well, high cholesterol clogs arteries, plugs up your ticker, you have a stroke, then you die, and then they shove you in the pine box or the incinerator. In my opinion, what's clogging up arteries is sugar. It comes in a gajillion forms, high fructose, corn syrup, cane sugar, you name it fruits all this fruit back in the day when man was just crawling around on planet earth all of our fruits were little bitty shrinky things like bananas they were like this big and they were sour and this and that we've we've gotten very good at high you know hybridization and breeding these things up to be very sweet we like sweet don't we oh yeah we love sweet that is what's clogging artery and all these grains okay I'm off, get off all that stuff. It's poison, guys. It's poison. Does any, uh, guys, does anybody in Big Pharma and your doctors, the medical team, talking about any of this stuff other than old Steve-O? Are you kidding me? A backyard beekeeper? It is a mind blower, guys. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of that. You know, you guys, if, if you watch my channel, you know darn good and well what I'm all about. It's a carnivore diet, all right? You have bacon and eggs for breakfast, or bacon and sausage for around noonish. You have, you eat meat. You can eat fish. You can eat oyster. You can eat shrimp. That's another one. Oh, you're going to get gout. That is BS. BS. That's what Big Pharma said. You're gonna have. You got gout. Well, what's causing the gout is all of this sugar in your system. That's what's causing gout. It's not all. This. It is a farce what they're preaching. And I'm not a doctor, 
But you guys don't need to be a doctor for this one. Anyway, let's get off of that. The doctor calls. We're looking at your blood work, sir, and uh, let's see. Uh, are, you on, are you on cholesterol medication? I, I said, well, it was years ago. I had to get off of it because that was causing, let's see, carpal tunnel, uh, carpal tunnel, uh, and, and, and it was also causing plantar fasciitis. Huh? Yeah, uh, that drug will affect muscle. I don't know. Have you seen the poop sheet on that? It caused, it caused muscle issues. Oh, really? I said, oh. No. She says, well, I said, well, what's, I said, what's my HDL? That's the important one. Oh, that was 55, sir. I said, 55. Okay, well, that, 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 then that makes old Steve-O golden. I'm golden now. Well, uh, not so much. <laughs> not so much, sir. <clears throat> Your LDL was way off the chart. <clears throat> I said, ma'am, I don't care if that number, LDL number, goes to the moon. And she says, oh, really? <laughs> God, guys, I wish you could have been a little birdie on my shoulder listening to this one. Well, I'll just put in the notes here. Let's see. I'll just, I'll just put in the notes here. Patient does not want to take cholesterol medication. I said, that is a good thing to put in that little notepad of yours. I said, put that right in there. No, I'm not taking that poison. No, no, thank you. Okay, what other problems does old Steve have? Well, <clears throat> you're 72 years old. I said, yeah, last time I checked. Well, do you know do you know your testosterone level, sir, is up to nine eighteen? I said, well, let's see. The range is from two hundred to eleven hundred. I said that two hundred number to me is ridiculous. She said, sir, you have the testosterone level of an eighteen year old. I said, what's wrong with that? She said, you're too old for that kind of testosterone. I said, oh, really? I'm too old for that. Maybe I'm too old to do uh, my two-mile hikes every day. Uh, maybe I'm too old to uh, grab the 30-pound dumb dumbbells and pump out four uh, sets of 15 repetitions each of those. Maybe I'm too old for that, too. Maybe I should reevaluate my iron working scenario and do the same thing with the flies you know you grab them and go out like with the flies right uh four sets of those 15 times she said sir that's way too much i said i'll tell you what ma'am i'm in the range from from 200 to 1100 and i'm 918 all right whatever that was i said no i'm fine with it and so is my urologist he's fine with it oh okay I said, well, what other, what other uh, stuff on that whole blood? Well, there's a ton of stuff, guys. It was it was a, it was three sheets of junk. Uh, I said, I said, what was my um, glucose? That's a good one right there, guys. All right. Oh, uh, you were 99 on that. <clears throat> I said, well, that's probably a pretty good number, right? You're golden. You're golden. They wanted to see that, you know, off the chart, way the heck up there, so we can hook you up with metformin and all that stuff. And the reason I'm not hooked up with metformin is that uh, I don't eat sugar. Okay, guys. Don't, don't, don't let these doctors take you down a path. Uh, I just lost two buds. Well, I lost one in November. I've known him since the mid-50s, right? And then I lost another fellow I worked with. He And he, the guy that was, I knew him from the, known from the 50s. He was 70, I think he was 74, 74 years old. And he checked out a massively, massively di overweight diabetic had been for years, and I told him years ago, please, it's, I, I, I don't know what you're eating, bro. Just stop it. Just go carnivore. What are you talking about, this carnivore thing? I said, it's just meat. I explained it to him, just like I've explained it to you guys. Oh, man, man, I, I, I don't know about that. I said, you better reevaluate the situation real, real soon. 
This it ain't pretty toward the end. I'm telling you, bro. It ain't pretty. So he's checked out now, and and I don't know for sure. Uh, he's a Vietnam vet, Marine. A Marine of all things, guys. A Marine. All right, a Marine. You know the physical stuff they go through, and 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 the hard work and this and that goes into being a Marine. Incredible. You know what they're doing now in the military? They're finally, you know, they get about that much more goodness here, uh, common sense here going on with the uh, Special Forces guys, the uh, the Navy SEALs. They're putting them on a keto carnivore diet, from what I've heard. Very smart on their part. Anyway, my other bud that just checked out in uh, December, he was 68 years old. Pretty good shape. He rode a bike, this and that, but he ate junk food. Uh, his weight went fluctuated slightly. Uh, he was on the big pharma drugs. I told him to get off of that. Uh, and, and I don't know what kind of sugar intake he had going on. Some guys can pound down a bunch of sugar, which just puts your body in a total high state of inflammation. And it does. it can start affecting joints, muscles. Last time I checked, the heart is a muscle, okay? Uh, you start getting this all this inflammation in there from sugar. I knew he drank a lot of, because I worked with him on the job side, he drank a lot of Diet Coke. Well, that's got a long list. of starts with P. I don't know the name of it. It's a sugar substitute in there. Highly toxic. Highly toxic. The regular Coca-Cola's, that's got the loaded with a high fructose corn syrup highly toxic all these seed oils that you get all this canola all this other stuff highly inflammatory to the body real olive oil is good butter is good bacon grease is very good for your body beef fat when you're cutting your steaks guys you, all that fat the doctors have told us for years, trim the fat, throw it away. It's going to clog up your heart. That is a lie. It does not. Salt. They're still preaching to this day, guys. Lower your salt intake. No, you salt to taste. You salt to taste. Just like every other wild creature in the wild... They salt their food to taste. They go around and lick salty rocks and this to taste. They know instinctively how much salt goes in that body. And so do I, because I salt to taste. It's incredible, guys, what's going on in the medical world. Yeah, so we've lost two more buds. Very, very sad, very sad. Now, I've talked to both of them fellas in the past. And it just goes here and goes out here, okay? So, I don't have credentials. I don't have any credentials saying that I'm a doctor. So, why would anybody in their right mind listen to me? Really, why would anybody listen to me? I don't have any credentials. I'm a backwoods beekeeper. But once you start this carnivore diet, guys, and get on that... Your whole life's going to start changing around for the better. And your Miss Daisy's going to start liking you, too, because you'll be a frisky little boy, okay? All right, now, what else have I got? Oh, yeah, thick blood. Yeah, guys, keep that testosterone checked. And if this drops down below 200, you get, on, you get to your doctor. Uh, you're going to have to go through your ure urologist. It's crazy, I know. Why wouldn't? Why can't a primary care physician handle this situation? Because they want to get you over there to urologist. Because that's kind of a wiener thing, okay? That affects the wiener, all right? So let's get you over to urologist. That's the wiener department, okay? Why wouldn't a primary guy handle this? And handle that also in the normal blood work. They don't even put that in. Little secret. Shh. Don't put that into the regular blood work. We don't if his if his 
testosterone, guys, shh, if his testosterone drops real low, he'll start feeling like crap. And he'll be coming in my office, and I can hook him up with uh, psyche, you know, psyche drugs. Uh, oh yeah, I can just I can just go on and on. His body's gonna start aching like hell. His joints are gonna start hurting. I can I can send him off to my buddy. He's my fishing buddy's right over here. Uh, he's a he's a foot and, and and foot doctor. And and my other buddy over here, he's a knee surgeon. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, we can ship him here. We can ship him there all over. And we can get, oh, we can get this, we can get this insurance money going, guys, like you would not believe. Shh, don't let this, don't let this cat out of the bag, please. Good Lord, we're able to get in trouble here. Hello, guys. It's time to wake up. This is, this is 20, 22. This is a brand new year. We're going to get some stuff, you know, we're going to get some stuff changed and uh, going on here in 2022, guys. All right, thick blood. Where was I? I drifted off of there for a little bit. Thick blood. Now, when you go on testosterone therapy, like I said, if it's below 200, go to say, listen, I got to get jacked up. Steve-O, just blame it on Steve-O. I, I talked to Steve-O, and Steve-O said, get over there and start your injections. Now, you're going to do these injections yourself. You're going to stab yourself in the thigh on one Monday. The next Monday, stab yourself on in the other leg, back and forth. Once a week, you're only shooting like a half a milliliter. It's nothing. You shoot with a 21-gauge needle, one inch long, out of a 3 mil syringe. You're shooting sipinate bioidentical to the human body. That's what you're going to shoot up. All right, now, when you start that, your blood's going to thicken. It's all part of the maintenance deal, guys. I'm sorry. It's just part of getting old and going through the maintenance thing, just like you take your car in and get the oil change and all of that stuff. Right? You're going to go in and have your blood check for thickness. Now, my doctor, it, he said, when it gets above 17, get a blood draw and dump. Now, me with head cancer, I cannot donate blood for a whole year, according to one blood. They told me before it's going to be two years. My other urologist said, oh, I'm taking you off testosterone for two years. I said, what? I'll feel like crap. I mean, if I'm already feeling like crap. Sorry. <laughs> it's a joke, right? It's a joke. I'm going to feel like crap for two years. So anyway, left his office disgusted. Then I got hooked up with this my, my robot man. And I told my robot man the same story. He goes, what? What did he say? I said, two years. Oh, oh no. Oh no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Yeah. Now here's a guy with common sense. I like that. I like a leader. Hello. Hello, a new administration. I like a leader with common sense. If we got anything going on in this country right now, guys, with common sense, have we really? Oh my goodness. The guy says, no, that's not good at all. Listen, I'm going to be doing PSA on you. If your PSA comes up zero, you're going back on testosterone. Now, if you're on it for six months or whatever, and that PSA climbs, there's a possibility you've still got some cancer crawling around in there. I'm taking you back off of it. But until then, no, you're going back on it. What the heck sense of it going through all this stuff? And then you sitting around feeling like hell. This is the kind of stuff, guys, that makes these Vietnam guys and, 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 and Iraq guys and this and that that are killing themselves 22 a day. 22 guys a day. People that covered for your ass in a battlefield. You're just going to let them fall by the wayside and not make sure their testosterone was jacked up to an 18-year-old 
the amount that they went into the army with in the first place that were jacked up enough to charge the enemy and cut their head off, okay? They're going to remove that, let you just fall down, okay? So you, all kind of complications come down the pike and put you in a high state of inflammation so you feel like crap, so you can go wandering off, upset, strung out, and ready to take a suck on a 357 Magnum or a Dirty Harry 44 Magnum, okay? That would be a very bad picture, but that's what's happening today. And nobody's talking about it, but your Uncle Steve-O. So, so, anyway. Yeah, you're going to get thick blood. So you're going to monitor that. And my doctor said, listen, you go over 17, you're going to do a blood draw and dump. You can get it done at one blood. See, that's where I've been doing it for years. I've been on testosterone for years, and every other month, religiously, I'm going in and giving them a pint. And I was up to, uh, I'm up to six gallons now, donation. But they said, all you got to do is get a script. So I got a script. It's a whole running script for a whole year. And if I come clean on PSA at the end of one year, then I can start donating. All right. But here's, here's, here's something was unreal. It's been all the way in June since I had this surgery, right? Just, what was it, M Monday? No, Wednesday. Wednesday. Today's Friday. Wednesday I went in. I just thought I, the, the, last two, the last two checks on my blood, I was 16.9. I was right there at the borderline of hitting 17. 17 and above, blood draw and dump. Now what happens when you blood draw... Your, your 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 blood gets thinner. You're making blood, and it's thinner, see? And so it took all this time from June until about a month ago. I was still at 16.9 a month ago. So here we are. What is today? January. I'm saying Happy New Year. And here we are all the way into uh, January 7. So... Anyway, I went in Wednesday, and I said, I'm just in the area. Can you check my blood? Sure. Jump up there. I said, I got a running script. Good. So they checked it, and I was at 18.5. Uh, they said, time for a blood draw. I said, let's get her done. And uh, so I said, so I got, the, I got in the chair. They get me all prepped, ready to stab the spike in to start pulling blood. And uh, he said, what size t-shirt do you wear? I said, well, I'm not eligible for the gift certificate and the t-shirt. Uh, I said, I'll take the bottle of water, though. He said, yeah, let me get that bottle of water for you. And he got me the bottle of water. And he says, uh, why? I said, well, I've had cancer. And I said, you can't take my blood for... Uh, for a whole year, if I until I come clean, right? He says, uh, "Did you fill out the paperwork on the tablet, on the digital tablet, or did you fill it out handwritten?" I said, "No, the digital tablet, like I always do." Well, we're keeping your blood. I said, "Huh?" So again, let me ask you, what size T-shirt do you do you need? I said, well, large will work. I said, but uh, you better recheck that. I said, I don't think I'm eligible for it. Because I'm, I'm supposed to be uh, coming clean for a whole, you know, be a whole year before I start uh, donating blood again. He said, I'm telling you right now, if you filled out the paperwork on the tablet, electronic tablet, we're keeping that blood. I said, okay, large shirt. He says, oh, here's your gift certificate. Now that when it was 10 bucks, now it, was, it went up to 20 bucks. So you can go to you can go to Longhorn Steakhouse with that twenty bucks. You can go here. You can go to a movie theater and this and that. And Steve-O was a happy camper. Yeah, I guys. So we got. It. I didn't understand that one, but I made a note to come back. They want me to come back in March. I'll go back in in March. That'll be two months. They'll recheck it. Of course, I'll be my urologist should be doing checks on my PSA right along. To make sure that that thing stays at zero 
So I'm glad you guys have been checking up on the old Steve-O. Did you guys see that speech? Oh, man. This new administration, boy, they are way up there in law, law, land, aren't they? The, the insurrection, insurrection. Oh, oh, my goodness. Did you see Harris? I was sitting there with Miss Daisy in the living room, and I had, thank God, guys, I had control of the remote. Harris got on there and started talking and, you know, and all her grand authority and, and telling every one of us to make sure that we got the picture, right? That this whole insurrection thing was just absolutely horrific. And it was, it was right in line with Pearl Harbor and 9-11 and, 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 oh my God, everything. I know. Uh, oh, wow. I, I happened to glance over to Miss Daisy and I swear to God, guys, I saw snakes starting to emerge from her skull, okay? They were coming out. They got about that long, and they were starting to wiggle. And she had this look, okay? And, and, and she, these snakes were coming out of her skull, guys. And I looked over there, and... and I immediately took that remote and clicked over to a little house on the prairie. And then all of a sudden, the snakes went back into her skull. I, it's mind-blowing what these people are up to, isn't it, guys? I don't want to say any more than that because I don't want my blood... My blood pressure is running fine, guys. Absolutely perfect. I don't want that to get upset, and I don't want yours either, but... Let's not, you know, between Big Pharma and, uh, and, and and this phony medical system, and now we got our government involved in medical. If you like your if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Remember that guy. Um, wow, I mean, it's it's right. It's right at the point of uh, I don't know if it's no return or not, but we all got to stick together and and stop these people because. Uh, you don't want to, listen guys, you don't want to tick off Miss Daisy. Uh, oh Lord, have you got, if you want to see a woman, guys, that it, that is Beth Dutton on steroids, uh, that would be Miss Daisy, okay? And if you don't know who Beth Dutton is, you just Google it, guys, and you'll get the whole picture. But uh, now you know what I'm talking about, okay? If these people don't stop it, she she's able to be on their doorstep, guys. I'm I'm not kidding you. All right, guys, let's uh, stop talking about that stuff because you know we we got to do better. We have got to do better. Uh, we will, we will, we will. Yeah, it's just a, you know it takes time. I'm glad they're doing. All I can say is, guys, I'm glad they're doing what they're doing. So the people, the common sense people of, of you know, and you know, you got common sense people like this guy here. You know, he's a wild, crazy guy, but I wish to heck we had uh, 10 million more just like him because he's a patriot. Let's face it, he's a patriot. He loves this country. He loves this country. So anyway, like all of us patriots, let's face it, guys. We love this country. We don't want to see it going to hell in a handbasket like it's going right now. So anyway, let's stop that and go in there. I got some footage on the camera last night in the swamp. Let's let's go in there and look at that and see what's going on in the swamp, all right? All righty, guys. Let's see what we got here going on. This was last night in the swamp. Well, this is just before dark, though. I put this camera on just before. Here's our bucket, you know. This is our antler harvesting device. You've seen me do that before. It's still out here. The deer were really freaked out over this thing. But you can see the squirrels are just loving it. Squirrels are, little squirrels are just loving it.
Oh, what the heck was that? Whoa. Oh, I see it. I see it right here, guys. Right here. There's a there's a deer's ear right there. Yeah, there's a deer. There's some eyeballs there, see? Yeah. Okay. Deer came in. Let's just click on through them. There's a pile of them. Look at this girl here. They have no problem eating out of this bucket now, guys. <clears throat> fear, the fear is over. She said, yum, yum, sweet corn. That's this year's baby right there. Let's click down through. See, her face is right in the bucket, guys. And if we get a buck in here, about an eight-point buck in here, I got two, two eight-pointers out here. They're going to be bumping their antlers off of this thing. And hopefully we'll get some... One morning we're going to find some shed antlers down here. You know, it'll be fun to see. I got a salt lick right here. That thing right there is a uh, salt lick. It's called the trophy rock. Here, there you can see a little better. There's a raccoon there, but there's the trophy rock. They last a long time, guys. I may get some spoiled corn in the bottom of this thing. I just keep topping it out every night. I've got still, I got 150 pounds of corn out there in the barn. Boy, these coon are fattening up. We're not taking any more coon this year. <clears throat> We're leaving them all for seed. They can have fun breeding all season long. Look at him, boy. He's smacking his... Look at him. Handfuls of it. He's just in hog heaven, isn't he? Them little rascals. I got everything coming down. Flying squirrels. I mean, I got a bunch of critters hitting this thing, guys. Yep. Bunch of critters hitting this thing. Boy, he's just... He's just camped out there, isn't he? These are two small... Uh... Litter mates here. They're not very big coons. Yeah, they're litter mates. Yeah, this this was last night. Yeah, they fattened up. Oh, the rain's coming in. Yeah, a little shot of rain last night. I don't know exactly what time it was, but... And I don't have the time set on this thing. Look at this poor deer, guys. Look at, look at this poor guy here. I'm surprised he's still alive. I've got a hunch he was hit by a car because he's got some scarred marks. Now, let me back this up and you can see this poor guy's foot. Watch him, watch him come in here now. I'm going to forward this thing. Watch him, look at that foot. It's completely snapped and rolled back. And he's got these scars. I, I got a hunch he was hit by a car and slid across the uh, asphalt. And he had, I think he snapped his rack off too, because there is remnants of stubs here. Then they should not have their antlers off yet. So I think he did ass over a tea kettle on the road out here and busted off his antlers because he's got scar marks on both sides and he's got that foot busted. Now I've been watching this guy, guys, for over a month. This poor, this poor guy has been walking around out here with his busted foot. Other than that, other than that, he seems fairly healthy. I mean, I've seen, I've seen deer guys 
with front legs completely blown off, you know, rifle shots up in Michigan and whatnot. There is tons of deer running around with horrific injuries like this, and they just keep going. Look at that foot all bent back. If he doesn't, I don't know, if he doesn't get an infection in that thing, he may make it. You can see where his antlers were here and they were, they're snapped off. He's in bad shape, guys. That is one hurting dude right there. Let's see, look, at he grooms himself, he eats corn. He's eating good. He's got a salt lick right there. He can get his minerals. But that foot's not going to get any better, that's for sure. Look how he holds it up in the air. Just, he basically just walks on three legs. I hadn't seen him for a while. I put this camera about out about every three nights I put it out. No need putting it out every night. Look at this thing right here, guys. That dog right there is waiting for that deer to die, I can tell you that. <clears throat> he he can probably smell he can probably smell that that wound on that animal. Yeah. I bet he can smell it. I don't know what the trip what trip the camera here. Here we got some does come in. Oh, we got four of them. Got four of these girls coming in here. Wow, where are all the big boys at? That's what I want to see. <clears throat> Look at them. They just they have no problem dropping their head right in that bucket. See you guys. So you know darn well. A eight point buck comes in here. He's going to be banging them antlers off of those two by twos. All right, let's just click through, guys, and finish this video up. Nice doe. She's a good looking girl right there. Oh, we're back to daytime. Squirrels are back in action. <laughs> lots, lots of squirrels. They're having a field day with this corn, guys, I'm telling you. One, two, three, four, five of them. About every other night I, I put more corn in there. I try to top the bucket out so the deer don't have to reach in so far, you know. Up to 54 he picks. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for stopping in the old base camp. And I uh, appreciate you checking out old Steve-O. And uh, checking in on me. See how I'm doing and all. I'm doing good. I'm doing real good, guys. And uh, we'll get out and do some fishing real soon. I got to get back to the mullet hole at least one more time. And I'm also, I made some traps. And I'm setting those out for catching crayfish. So we'll, uh, I'm going to try to... Uh, catch some crayfish and try out for uh, pompano and uh, whiting on the on the beach freshwater crayfish tails that tell me work pretty good so i'm trapping them now i've got some in the fridge in the freezer we'll keep trapping them get enough up to take that down to the water uh, for bait and give it a shot so i'll see you soon guys be happy be strong we got to keep getting it on see ya